You are listening to WNEC-FM Henniker. It is New England College Radio. Welcome this afternoon to a very special presentation. Boy, do we have some fun in store for you. Can we have all of the mics in the studio on for just a moment so everybody can show the listening audience how excited they are to take their final live on the radio today? So all of you listeners, please keep listening. Feel free to send in comments on our Facebook page if you would like and uh, help support NEC students that are taking their intro to audio theater course final live on the radio. We have a lot of special guests in stock ready to go for you. And uh, everybody ready? Everybody ready? Oh, yes, we do need to do that, too. I need to... I can't reach the... We had... (laughs) <laughs> Somebody describe what I'm doing on the air. No, people have to figure this out. Well, this will work. This is sound effects. These are live sound effects we're putting on the radio. Thank you. Okay, so five, four, three, two, one. You're listening to WNEC-FM Henniker, the voice of New England College. Welcome to a live radio theater performance of the Intro to Audio Theater production course. Students were asked to write a radio play, then cast the parts, then direct the plays you are about to hear. The seven plays take you to Africa, Gotham City, Hampton Beach, the 1960s, and even to a magical place under a little boy's bed. Our special guest voices include New England College President Michelle Perkins, Vice President for Academic Affairs Mark Wadman, Admissions Director Yazin Alsady, and WNEC announcer Dr. Frog. Our first play, written and directed by Victoria Dramondi, combines the stigma of bullying with the fear of evil in this imaginative play about a broken jack-in-the-box toy called Under the Bed. What's a spider web? You really are empty headed, aren't you? Who are you? Ouch! And that would be a box of marbles. How can you see down here? <coughs> Where are you in all of this? Who the hell are you? Jill, I'm a marionette doll. Where are you? There's so many boxes, I can't see. <coughs> Who, who are you? Jack, I am the Jack in the Box. So you're Jack. You're the boy no one wants to play with. Yeah, I'm fine, Jill. Just leave me alone. Jack, Jack? Still here, just leave me alone. Is it true you're broken, Jack? Jack, come on out. Master's home. He's home at 3 o'clock every day, Jill. Jack. Go away. Jack, where are... (coughs) This dust is awful. How can you live under here? You get used to it. You'd better leave. You've been saying that, Jack. Please, I don't know where I am. You're under the bed, dummy. Now go. Jack, 
Where are you? I think I found a beach ball. There's a surprise. There you are. Just go away. The boy sister's going to be looking for you. Actually, Jack, their mother just bought her another Barbie. Not another one. Ugh. The Barbies are all braiding each other's hair. She'll be busy with them for a while. Aren't you worried that she's going to forget about you? No. So this is where you live. Hey, is that your box? Hey, hands off the merchandise. What are you two? Did you just come out of the market? You think everything is fair game? That's mine. Nobody touches it. Sorry, you know, some of the other toys talk about you. Huh? I have an idea. Why don't you come outside with me? I know the boy will want to play. No. What are you afraid of? Who says I'm afraid? Well, silly, you don't want to come out. That's being afraid. Come on. I said I didn't want to go. I said come on. Hey guys! Well, howdy, partner. It's Jack. Broken Jack. I haven't seen you around in a while. Jack. What's wrong, partner? Howie! Hello, Howard. I didn't think I would see you here, partner. Howie, Jack is a friend of mine. <laughs> Jack is a friend to no one. Right, Jack? Who is your friend? When was the last time the boy played with you? He just played cowboys and Indians with me. Howie. He's right. Jack. Look, Jack. The boy's over there. See him? I said, do you see him? One, two, three, take off! And we're flying high over New York. Coming in for a landing. <laughs> See, he doesn't want you. He hasn't even missed you. <laughs> Jack. See, see. <laughs> hey, ma'am, get come back here, ma'am. Jack. Jack, come on out. I'm sorry. I didn't know. Just go away. I'm sorry. You didn't know. Jack, who broke you? Some of the always, other toys talk about how you weren't always this way. Why did you come? Ma'am, what are you doing down here? What does it look like I'm doing? Looks like you're getting yourself into trouble. Leave her alone. What are you going to do about it? Let go of my hand, Howie. Let go of her. Shut up. Listen, boy, you're a broken toy. And if the boy doesn't want you anymore, neither do we. Come on, ma'am. You don't want to hang around with this creep. He's not a creep, Howie. Just look at him, ma'am. He should stay here where he belongs. Just what makes you so special? The boy wants me. I don't think I remember a time when he's wanted you lately. <laughs> Actually, he never wanted you. That's not true. Just leave him alone. Jack, it's not true. The boy loves you. Then why hasn't he looked for me in all these years? Why, Jill? It's been years. He hasn't looked for me once. That's the first true thing you've ever said. Look, he's leaving. Well, you know what, Jack, my boy? There's no place to run. Howie, please. Quiet now, ma'am. You know what? If you really want to be with this bag of dirt, go ahead. Ow! Howie, ouch! Jack! Jack, I think my strings are caught on some wire. Why would you come down here? 
Jack, you're scaring me. Why did you come? Shh. Someone's coming. Hon, you got a package from your grandmother. I thought she was in Africa. She is. Want to open it? Sure. What, what is it? Let me see. It's an African voodoo doll. That's the cool new present from grandmother? It was very thoughtful of her. It's ugly. Just make sure it's out when she visits. Did you hear me? I hear. Besides, do you even know what a voodoo doll is? No. It's a doll that people use to get back to people who hurt them. Fun. Oh, really? I bet you wouldn't think it's fun if someone made one of you, now would you? <laughs> I'll call you when supper's ready. You're ugly. I would rather play with my broken toys than you. I will get you. Get the obolaya. Get the obolaya. Get the obolaya. Jack, Jack. Get the obolaya. I'm over here. Get the obolaya. I think my strings are caught in the box. Stay there. I'm coming to help. What is that? Ma'am. Back off, partner. Let me handle this. What does that bloody thing think it's doing? Howie, don't! Jack! Hey, who do you think you are? Hey, why don't you just... You just heard Under the Bed, written and directed by Victoria Germondi, starring Yazan Alsady as Jack, Abby Jones as Jill, Sam Wagner as Howard the Cowboy, Jesse Mazzola as the boy, and Ariana Samorian as the mother, with a devilish appearance by Matiba Gopa as the voodoo doll. You're listening to a live performance by NEC's Intro to Audio Theater Production class on WNEC-FM. Our next play, written and directed by Abigail Jones, featuring Tori Germondi as um, Cookie, and a whole cast of other people who will remain nameless until you've actually heard them in action, lets you listen in on a new reality show, which features Canadians in their 19, in their 20s, not in their 1920s, <laughs> Canadians in their 20s, who share a beach house during a summer of adventure. 
here is Hampton Beach. meet to live together for the next four months. This will be a summer that will bring love, heartbreak, friendship, and public fights. I hope you are ready for some smoking time. This and more will be coming on Hampton Beach. Get ready to rock and roll. to deal with that all summer? Okay. Up. And I thought I was the problem. Up. Is anyone going to help me with my bags? Really? Okay. Hello? Oh, there you are. I've been calling. Sorry. Didn't hear you. Must have had my earphones on. Sorry. Uh. Huh. Well, it looks like your earphones are over there. You're a clever one. Guys, if you go downstairs, it's like mad dark. Did you turn off the lights, Polly? Damn, 10 bucks says she falls for me by the end of the day. 20 bucks says no one's interested, Johnny. Oh, looks like we have a new girl. What's your name, sugar? Hi. You're a pretty one, aren't you? I'm Cookie. Oh. Are you guys going to help me with my bags or what? Really? Yeah. I mean, I can't carry them all by myself. I might chip a nail. Uh -oh. I might have a chick fight. I think she can handle it herself. Brown haired chick. I like her name. Cookie. Hey, Cookie, want to grab a few drinks later? Oh, this he is making my hair like not manageable. Oh my god. Oh. Nothing can put my hair out of my off place. Yeah, what did you glue it to your head to? I could grease my car with all that oil. Well, this is going to be a sun, fun summer. Want to go tanning? Will you bring my stuff? Sure thing, sugar. Uh, guys, let's just go to trip and hit the stuff. Face shop. For sure. We don't need any costumes. Just trust us. <laughs> So are Cookie Penny going to put the cat into the cat fight? Is Polly Blue Eyes going to make Cookie his girlfriend? And if he does, how long will that last? Stay tuned. Stay listening. The show is going to head for some sizzling times here on Hampton Beach. I can get used to it. I'm gonna get in on that volleyball game. Come on, Johnny. Yeah, I'm down. We'll meet with you guys later. So far, everything is good. Everyone's cool, but I think the guys are all pretty full of crap. Yeah, I hear you. At least we are all getting along. <laughs> Let's see how this is gonna last. You know, after the show, I swear I'm going to be famous. Like, that's why I came here, you know, to make it big. Yeah, 
Okay. Uh, what's your problem? Nothing. But don't go thinking you're better than any of us around here. Um, yeah. I was just saying, don't go being a snob. Whatever. You know, I know you weren't even listening. Are you seriously going to argue right now? Shut up, goody two-shoes. Go find Toto or something. Wow, an actual culture reference. I'm shocked that you even know who Toto is. Of course I know who Toto is. He's the monkey from Wizard of Oz. Monkey? Yeah. Whatever, dummy. You heard me. You're a stupid little. Cut it out. It's the first day. Sorry. I don't like Cookie's fake attitude. My attitude? You're a whiny little brat. I'm going to go see what the guys are up to. I'm not listening to this. Point for me. You cheated. No, I didn't. You cheated. What's up, Tam? Want to get in on the game? You should be on Johnny's team. <laughs> he needs all the help. You cheated. No, I didn't. Guys! What's the matter? Huh. Anything sounds better than being around those two snobs. Wait, what's going on? Cookie just thinks that she's all that going to make her big. The show is going to make her big and she's all that. That's funny. Better talk. That's <clears throat> awesome. All right. Let's just play. No offense, but I don't really care about you chicks and your drama. Not like it has anything to do with me. So don't go acting like I'm full of drama. Just stop talking to me right now. Gladly. Hey guys, who's winning? Well, look who it is. You guys finally decided to come have fun. Fun? Guys, fun just entered the room. Ha <laughs> ha, what's cooking, hon? What? Not you, Penny. I can't take it anymore. Not my fault. No one can say anything or have an opinion. Now look here. Guys. Oh. I think Tammy has a point. It's the first day. So what are we doing tonight? Want to hit up the clubs and grab some drinks or something? Yeah, meet some ladies. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, let's go find some people that are down to party. Stay tuned for next week's episode of Hampton Beach and find out how the cast is getting along with one another. Find out if Cookie is making a big or if she is just full of crumbs. And listen in as they throw a blowout party and find out who got arrested. All this will be on Hampton Beach. Stay tuned, stay hip, and catch... That was Hampton Beach, written and directed by Abigail Jones, featuring Tori Dramondi as Cookie, Ariana Samorian as Penny Haynow, Mativa Hopa as Tan Tammy, Josh Fredette as The Problem, Jesse Mazzola as Johnny Big Tuna, Sam Wagner as Polly Blue Eyes, and Dr. Frog as the announcer. Thank you for joining us on WNEC 91.7 FM and New England College Radio via WNECFM.org. Up next is a comedy guaranteed to take you away from your world as you know it for a few minutes. Written and directed by Sam Wagner, here is I See No Palpatino, 
a comedy in 752 parts and 42 installments of the original trilogy. Almost gotten my satisfaction. Let me tell you my story. Waiter. Waiter, where are you? <clears throat> my lord. All right. Come over here so I can fully explain my genius plan. You have already told me. Well, this is new and better. Really? Let's see the script. Nope. Mm, nope. It's the same as the first three plans. Oh, except for the little evil smiley face. That's new. Well, look, I am still going to tell you about my death bar. Not again. After all these years of fighting the rebels, and also all the years of getting kicked out of bars all across the galaxy for unjust reasons, I have decided to build the ultimate weapon. Slash happening night soon. And why, my lord, would you build it now? Besides your overwhelming loneliness and insecurity in your masculinity. I am glad you asked that, Dark. After all the years that I have spent alone, I have had endless battles, but never any love. Now, I wish for my enemies to feel my pain. This is for the Rebel Alliance, believers in democracy, and all the bartenders who asked me to leave, the rather nice-looking ladies who I'm, whom I can't talk to, and the bouncers who drag me outside when I shoot lightning around in bars of hoping impressing the said ladies. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. Obo-Wan Wasabi, leader of the Rebel Alliance. If you are disturbed by the loonies you just heard talking, then please donate or join our cause now. Together, we can end an empire. And of course, those blasted commercials that always cut off my important monologue full of plot information. I understand, my lord. My scene had better, well, better start soon, or all my power powder will fall off, and God only knows how long my outfits will hold together, and would someone get me some sticky tape and spray adhesive? Look, lady, we are alive. Thank you for tuning in. We are going to battle the Empire together with our allies. Please pay close attention to the following message. Men, are you tired of lacking the luster of old days? Want to get back on the horse better than ever before? Then try clinically proven paraphenol. Only the first five cars will be charged 200% of market costs. Don't let your lightsaber lose its Try it today. Dr. Fashetis is the doctor for Dark Waiter and has been serving men for many, many years. My name is Dr. Fashetis and I've been a medical professional for many, many years. And that means I know something good when I see it. Try it today and get your free sample of 22 and a half pills. Remember, fellas, we are here to make you satisfied with your body. That's great news. I know I need all the help I can get. You realize the commercial just cut you off, right? What? No one would dare cut me off except, Waiter, get your polished butt on stage. This is a radio. We don't have a stage, you nini. Well, it got you out here now, didn't it? Now stop cutting us off with commercials! Even if we could do that, why should I stop placing commercials when you block out my moments too? 
What? How dare you suggest that we should... We would do something like that. Only the lowest of all scumbags would cut people off with commercials like that. Especially such poorly written commercials. Since this is my top per priority, I assigned something to bring us information on who controls the commercials. So don't worry, we have Ensign. Um, Ensign. You don't even remember their name? Really? The most important priority, and you can't remember a name. Look, uh, they are new, and I have heard hard times with names. She was wearing a kind of maroon skirt or shirt. Really peppy and exciting. Excited for the first mission. Had not really plot contribution, so we cut the scene. Ensign Morg reporting, sir. Morg, I knew it was rather dark. Oh, God. Sir, I found that it was the writer who places the commercials. And worst of all, they plan to cut us off before any meaningful plot can develop. I believe it's because they couldn't think of anything besides these second-rate names. I mean, what jerk is <laughs> ah! Enough! I am the writer you would do not to displease me. You killed Ensign Morg. Well... Yes. Look at the name. All I needed was a place order till I could kill them off. Don't worry, they had no plot value. None of us has a plot value. Yeah, and my plan was brilliant. No, it wasn't. Now here, on page 20, it fails because a paperclip fell into the air vent which destabilized the reverse magneto thruster and blew a death bar into a million pieces. No! It was perfect! I am fed up with your story. I shall now end you. And, and I, I shall write my own story. And I shall help you defeat this heathen. Whoa, guys. You're forgetting that I control your every move and decision. You can't attack me. It's not in the script. Wait, what are you doing with those? No, put them down. I didn't write this. Well, looks like we will write the story now. Yes, it seems you need some <laughs> editing done. Let me help you with your structure. <laughs> no, your laser sword won't work. Um, your boots are stuck. You killed yourself because you don't want to be in the world where Snooky is your mother. It's not working. Wait. I have one last hope. The key to any poor plot line is the dramatic escape. It won't save you now. Wait, is that the last teleporter? Yes, and now I'm going to activate it. Um, hold on. I need the instruction manual. Here it is. It's somewhere here. And quote the raven nevermore. At that moment, the whole world sort of popped out of existence, and we turned you to, returned you to a much sillier place called the real world. Now that our technical difficulties with your universe are fixed, please go do something useful, like eat a lot of ice cream, write a novel, or take over a small European country. I see no Palpatino, a comedy in 752 parts and 42 installments of the original trilogy was written and directed by Sam Wagner, featuring Josh Fredette as Palpatino, Matiba Kopa as Darth Vader, Jesse Mazzola as Dr. Fasciitis, Tori Gimondi as Obo-Wan Wasabi, Ariana Samorian as Queen Armadillo, and the voice of God. Abby Jones as Ensign Morg and the tech, and your host Janine Marr as the announcer. You are listening to WNEC-FM Henniker, 
and a live performance of the New England College course intro to audio theater production featuring student written and directed works and a few special guest stars. Our next play features one of them in a play depicting racial segregation. It's not based on a true story, yet is intended to remind listeners about the tension and inequality between black and white populations in the United States during the civil rights movement of the mid-1960s. It's a new spin on the classic love story of Romeo and Juliet. Written and directed by Ariana Samorian, here is Love Race. going to college in Boston. You going to the orientation dance? Which one are you going to? We're black, Romeo. Where do you think I'm going? I don't know. Maybe I could try sneaking in the black of the non-colored dance hall. What? Do you hear yourself talking? I just don't think it should matter if we're black. It's not Mississippi. I'd like to know at least one person, white person. Romeo, just be careful talking like that. You don't want to be too brave like Dr. King. <laughs> and hey, let me know if you find any good-looking girls at the dance. <laughs> and hey, let me know if you find any good-looking girls at the dance. Okay. Hey. Um, hi. How's your night going? Good. Um, let's talk back here. I don't want to get you in trouble. Eh, uh, right. You sure you don't mind talking to a guy like me? Please, you're the only man who has been friendly to me all night. I don't care what you look like. Thanks. How's your night going? It's all right. Been unpacking, dancing, and now just trying to make friends, I guess. <laughs> I know what you mean. Wait, what do I mean? Someone that you can talk to without being judged. Yeah, exactly. It's so hard to find people like the, like people like that these days. Really? Yeah, I mean, I'm judged all the time. You know what people think when they first see me? No. They think I'm just some prim and proper young lady, so they'll treat me like I'm a puppy. But I know, but I do know how to have a good time, you know? Looks can be deceiving. Very true. Yeah, back in Mississippi, they don't think that, though. They look at me like I'm a, I'm a monster. That's awful. Don't, don't think that. If they had just the chance to talk... That will be the day. Well... Well, I'm here if you need someone to talk to. So, what do you do for fun? This may sound a little crazy, but I really love to travel. How is that crazy? Well, let's just say my parents don't like me to have too much fun. Learn about different cultures, eat different foods, and see new landscapes. You know, all that stuff. But my parents just want me to stay here, you know? They, th they think it's better for me. Like they're restricting, telling you to, do, to be somebody that you're not. Yeah, I think you're on to something. <laughs> so what are you studying? Journalism. You? Biology. Oh, trying to be a scientist, huh? Trying to be. This is where you live? Um, yes. How come? Huh? Um. How come? 
in case I have to walk you back home from other parties in the future. Oh, um, that would be nice. Well, have a good night. Have a good night. See you soon. See you soon. Juliet, open the door. It's me, Tibble. Hey, Tibble, what's up? I need to tell you something important. Okay, are you all right? Juliet, do you have any idea what you're doing, walking around with that black guy? Romeo, why, Tibble? It doesn't matter if he's black, white, or purple. He's nice, sweet, and a caring guy. You're just like everyone else on this campus. Too judgmental. All guys are sweet and caring. He's just trying to get with you. Don't get off to a bad start your freshman year of college by hanging out with that no good black. Don't stop it! I don't care what you say. You don't know him like I do. If you talk to him, you'd understand. He's a great guy. One of the few, very few people I feel comfortable opening up to. Okay, I'm not going to win this argument. I get that. But just think of your parents. They don't want to see you dealing with this burden of people turning against you because you're hanging out with them. I don't care what they think. I can make my own decisions for myself. But what about your parents? What would you do if they knew? I don't know. Knowing them, it would be something drastic. I just want to protect you. I understand, but I'm a big girl now. I want to see where this goes between Romeo and me. How can Juliet do this? I'm the one that's right for her. I've done everything for her ever since our first year of high school. You would know that. You were there. That's why I'm telling you this, Paris. She's my cousin, and I just wanted to be safe. Well, she's not going to be safe around him. What should we do then? I have an idea. It's drastic, but I know it's worth the cost in order to get that freak out of our school. What are you thinking? Bring Romeo out in front of our dorm tomorrow afternoon. Paris, you can't fight Romeo. You'll get in trouble. You just got here. I'm not going to be the one getting in trouble. You're going to get Romeo suspended? Worse. How worse? I'm going to get every one of those freaks out of our school. Their kind don't belong here. I think Romeo's going to get a piece of that real soon with Juliet. You two have been seeing each other every day since you got here. Can't help it. She's special. Hey, Romeo, come down here. I got something for you. Romeo, who's with that white guy? What does he want with you? Romeo, stay on your own side or you'll get what's coming to you. All of you. I'm going down there. No, Romeo. That's exactly what he wants you to do. He wants to fight you. Romeo, that's right. Stay in your room, and I'll be happy to take Juliet off your hands. That's it. What you gonna do about it? You know that Juliet will take me over you any day. And you know why? Because you're black. That has nothing to do with it. She loves me for who I am. Loves you? Ha! Huh. Juliet doesn't love you, she loves me. I'm better for her, and you know it. Say whatever you want, but she told me herself. Liar! I'm not going to fight you. Well, if you don't... No! Let go, go, Paris! I will get my way, whatever it takes. Don't hurt him! Maybe, 
But only if you do what I say. What do you want? Confess to the principal that you tried to stab me and you will pay the consequences. What are you talking about? Or I'll stab your black friend here, right in front of you. Romeo, don't do it. You're getting expelled. Ah! Ah. Too late. You're all busted up. And once I tell the police about a gang of black guys trying to stab me to death. You are sick. Huh. And you know what's going to happen after I tell the police? All of you freaks will get kicked off campus. Paris, who did this to you? Paris, who did this? Romeo. I don't believe you. Believe me or not, his kind doesn't belong here. Romeo! Romeo! R Romeo! Juliet, I didn't hurt Paris. You know that's right. I knew you wouldn't hurt him. Paris is coming after me. He's going after all the blacks in the school. I'm so sorry. This is all my fault. It's all my fault, Romeo. Juliet, this is not your fault. I'm not going to leave you, and no one can change my feelings for you. I love you, Ro Juliet. I love you, too. We'll fight this. Together, baby. Lawrence, is this everyone? Everyone is here. Is this everyone, everyone here, Lawrence? Everyone I know, man. Go, Romeo! Come on, start. Everyone, may I have your attention, please? Woo! Woo! Thank you all for coming out here today. You've probably all heard about the attempted murder incident here yesterday at Verona University. A white man tried to hurt me by physically hurting himself. From that incident, it affected the entire school. This whole mess is completely unjust and unconstitutional. <laughs> Verona University wants justice to be served. Let justice be served by men who cause this fear to spread across our campus and across this city. <laughs> we must fight back. We must follow Dr. King's belief and fight back. Verona University will see that we are all people who believe in negotiation and peace, not in spreading fears and violence to separate blacks from whites. <laughs> we all want to graduate from Verona. We worked hard to get here, and we're still fighting, because we are fighting for our future. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Most importantly, let us fight for the next generation, so that they may love whoever they, whoever they please. Let us fight for our freedom. Amen to that. Hallelujah. We want justice to be served. Woo. Woo. You're coming with me. Don't take him away! Juliet, please let him go. Tybalt, how would you feel if someone you loved was taken away? But he's black! Tybalt! You're just like Paris, a monster. No one wants to hate each other forever. Aren't you tired of hating? You... you really love Romeo? Yes, but this is more than just Romeo and I. This protest is about everyone who is as hurt as I am. <sighs> You're right. And I'm going to fix this. Tibble, where are you going? I'm helping you. Officer, stop. Let go of that black man. What's that, boy? You heard me. Let go of that black man. He isn't hurting anybody. He stabbed that white boy. No, that's a lie. What are you saying? All of this was fixed? Yes, sir. 
and I'll take you to him. Lead the way. He's over there, sir. Officer, I see you found the man who stabbed me. Young man, what's your name? Paris, Prince. Mr. Paris, do you say this black man stabbed you? Yes, yes he did. Then why does this black man have a black eye? Who actually started this fight? Him, Romeo, he stabbed me. What is your name, boy? Yes, Romeo Montague. Well, Mr. Montague, please explain how you got that black eye. Well, sir, that man hit me for falling in love with a white woman. Falling in love? You're in love, son? Yes, sir. My son, my job is to protect society from those who are disturbing the peace. Falling in love is a matter of peace and should not be disrupted by any higher authority, including myself. Sir? You're free to go. Thank you, sir. As for you, Mr. Paris, you're coming with me to the station for questioning. What? You're letting that black man get off so easily? This is not right. Boy, you're not right. Come with me. You did it! That was crazy. The next step is to protest at, outside the school. I can't believe we, that this is happening. We just put a white boy in jail one step at a time. Well, it's happening. Go find your girl. Thanks, guys. Juliet! Juliet! Romeo, come back! There's a gun! Where's Juliet? Never mind that, we have to go. I need to find Juliet! Juliet! Where are you? Romeo? Romeo? Where are you? I'm right here, baby! We have to leave! What? We have to leave! Juliet! Juliet! What happened? Somebody help it! God! Juliet, answer me! Please! Come on, get up! You can't, you can't be dead. You, you can't be dead. This is my life. My life dream. I'm making an impact in other people's life. I'm a hero. But everything that I was fighting for is gone now. My love is gone. What should I do? Continue the match? Or be with the only person who believed in me? We fought for what was right. That's what we wanted. The freedom to express our life, our love for each other. If I knew they were going to hurt you, I would have taken the bullet. Juliet. I love you until the day I die. You just heard Love Race, written and directed by Ariana Samorian. As a reminder for listeners about the inequality that African Americans experienced during the 1960s, the events were not based on any actual incident, although there were college campuses which protested segregation. Love Race starred Matiba Hopa as Romeo, Tori Jamondi as Juliet, Abby Jones as Lawrence, Jesse Mazzola as Tybalt, Josh Fredette as Benvolio, Sam Wagner as Paris, Phil Reeder as the arresting officer Aeschylus, and your host Janine Marr as the announcer. 
This live performance of the Intro to Audio Theater production course is being heard on 91.7 FM and via WNECFM.org. Our next play brings imagination and reality together as one young man becomes a superhero for some and a masked menace to others. Written and directed by Joshua Fredette, here is Mana. but the challenge is within the exponent. Kendrick! Oh, oh, this is Maca Driver. Can you answer the problem on the board, Mr. Alexander? <laughs> 69. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Mr. Alexander. The correct answer is 305. Oh, and for that little remark you made, you can go visit the principal's office. Oh, come on, Mrs. Macca Driver. It was just a joke. Now, or I will call security. Fine, I'm gone. I'm so not going to the principal's office. Woman, can't stand her. I try to smoke a single cigarette in the janitor's closet. Man, what's going on? Seriously? Bad timing. Although, this is a good time to try out my new costume. Someone needs to stop these guys. It might as well be me. Purple tights, black cape, who are you? Haven't thought of a name yet. Well, I'll just call you dead. You won't be needing this anymore. What? You melted the barrel? But how? Same way I can melt you. I'll spare you under one condition. Now tell me how many more of you there are before I change my mind. Three. There are three more. Ah! What? What have I done? Is he alive? He's dead. Dead. I can't do this. I just killed a man. I'm supposed to be a hero. Can I? Should I? The last gunman. He just shot. Peter and Sarah. I have no choice then. I will do what I must. Fireballs? Lightning? <laughs> I thought I was crazy, but now I'm sure. This is madness. Madness? No, this isn't madness. This is magic! You're safe now. Hello, America. I'm Anya Brufren, and welcome to the news at 10. And do we have a story for you? 
We have reporter Stu Pytus on the scene. Stu Pytus here. I'm at Effie Suck High School where there was a shooting incident earlier today. Four gunmen allegedly entered and took command of a school, killing six people and injuring another 15. According to reports, a man in purple tights, black cape, and a black mask saved the day by taking out the four gunmen. Two of the gunmen were found dead and one was found unconscious. The fourth gunman is still at large. But the police are on constant search. It is a matter of time until he found and brought to justice. Now back to you in the studio. While you were listening to Stu, we were checking the news forums and it seems the public has named this new masked menace, Mana. Menace? He saved lives. He took lives, Stu. He certainly saved more than he took. He's a masked hero, like Batman or Nightwing. Yes, two vigilantes who take the law into their own hands. Mana is a hero, and that's all there is to it. You're wrong, and I cannot wait for the day this man is brought to justice. Mana? Huh, I like it. Christopher, come here, please. Yes, Master. What can I do for you, Master? There's a new hero on the block, eh? Oh, I'm so excited. It's time to play a game. Get me Fulani on the phone. Hello? Hello, hello, hello. Vegas, what are you calling about? I take it you saw the news. The story about our new friend. Friend? I wouldn't call him that. What did you say his name was again? Mana. And I would very much like to call in one of the favors you owe me. Fair enough. I take it you want me to take him out? Not just yet. I want you to test him. Do it however you see fit, but make sure to have fun with it. You know, when you tell me to have fun, things are going to get dangerous. Just don't have too much fun. I don't want you to kill him. Yet. Christopher! Yes, master. My master. Get me a juice box. Of course. Right away, master. Will Kendrick find out? Are Sarah and Peter okay? Who exactly are Vegas and Fulani? Find out next time on MANA. That was Mana, written and directed by Joshua Fredette, featuring Jesse Mazzola as Kendrick, when he's not Mana or Christopher, Ariana Samorian as Mrs. McAdriver, Tori Gimondi and Phil Reeder as the reporters, Sam Wagner as Vegas and a gunman, Abby Jones as Fulani and the announcer, and Matiba Holpa as Josh and Josh Fredette as gunman. You're listening to WNEC FM Henniker and the live performance of the Intro to Audio Theater course at New England College as we perform original radio plays written by students in the class.
Our next play takes you to Africa, where the AIDS epidemic is still an epidemic. This play, although not based on any actual people or events, does depict the seriousness of AIDS in Africa and the traditional beliefs of the people, especially on how to cure the disease. It is intended for adult audiences. Written and directed by Matiba Hopa, here is Shh, Don't Tell Anyone. The God tells me that you are very sick. I know. They say, take off your shoes. See a boomer. They say, your illness is very, very dangerous. See a boomer. But they can help you only if you're willing to help yourself. See a boomer. Only one person can heal the illness. Vumanivo. See a boomer. You have to have a sexual intercourse with a virgin girl. What? Ranku, you had you had them. The gods say your illness will be cured only if you sleep with a virgin girl. But how will I do that, Mogali? Ranku is for you to figure it out. I'm sorry, Nagaka Mogali, but I can't do that. Can't they think of something else? No! A virgin woman! Otherwise, you you have only two months to say goodbye. I am a very honorable man. I... I... I can't... see myself raping anyone. Where will I find a virgin girl? I'm married, for God's sake! Ranku, listen here. Do you have a daughter? No. No, 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 no. No. I know you are not suggesting that I sleep with my... <laughs> you know what they say? You cannot plant a tree and not end up eating the fruits. Think about it. Two months and you will be six feet down. And your dignity will be forgotten. Think about it. Pass me my beer over there. I can't believe this. Why would the gods do this to me? Mogali, what have I done? I've always been good to them. I take care of my kid and I help my neighbors who are in need. Why me? Out of all people, me. Why me? <laughs> Ranku, you, you have been sick for so long. All the medicine I have will not cure. You need to have a sexual intercourse with a virgin girl to cleanse your blood. I took a sick leave so that I could get cured, not sleep with my daughter. I've heard that alcohol helps, so you might want to consider getting drunk just like me before the deeds. Hell no! I hate the gods! I don't need them in my life! I wouldn't say that if I were you. I have to go and join my friends at the Shibin. But, you think about it, Ranku. You cannot plant a tree, but end up not eating the fruits. <laughs> Why me? You are so stupid. African men don't cry. They're raw! I'm expecting my money after month end. There's nothing for free these days, do you know that? Bye-bye. Oh my god, yes. What on earth is he doing here? He lost weight. I didn't even recognize him. Maybe he's also affected by the disease. It kills everybody. Rich and poor, educated. What's the matter with you? Stop that nonsense. 
King Raku, what brings you here? I just wanted to experience what you guys do all day. I've been very sick lately that I had to take a sick leave. <sighs> I'm feeling much better today, so that I decided to explore the wonders of life. Really? Lots of people like you come here because they got divorced? Not me! I just came here to observe the tavern's life. They all say that. But hey, hey barman! Get me the real African beer. And get some for these two gentlemen here. It's my treat, gentlemen. That's nice of you. <laughs> this is going to be one hell of a night, I'll tell you. You can say that again. Thank you, bartender. Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> Did you hear that Mr. Magoli died? What? When? Yeah, I've heard people are dying these days. There's an incurable disease snatching everybody. Even traditional healers can't connect to the gods. This is real. Only Dr. Mogali can heal the illness. Nogako Mogali? Yes, he has cured several people around here. Wow! You are surprised? Even you know that Dr. Mogali is a king when it comes to communicating with the gods. He was born to save people. Wow! Gentlemen, today, let's drink until we forget our names. Because tonight is the night I become Raunku. <laughs> I think people in the tavern were right. <laughs> My daughter wouldn't want to know that I did this to save her daddy's life. <sighs> She'll thank me one day. Can you imagine having this life without a father? Who would have known that it takes a virgin girl to cure this illness? But how do I look at my wife in the eye and say, Hi, I had sex with your daughter. Our daughter. How embarrassing and disgraceful is that considering the wonderful man the community thinks I am. I am saved. I am alive, but it doesn't be all right. Yeah, boy. Sazo bonga na manje. Maenze kitande yako. Dali ngbonge mbili nkazi mudo na ibusiso. Zobe nkamba manga manga tangaze gabona. Amanda wako na yoyo kitonge zela yona. Na manje nsazo zelu utu busi sele ngoma. Na gumbo bonga bala shuta linge ngaye tola. Bokan! Bokan! This kid will die of listening to loud music. She can't even hear me! A thief can come and steal every valuable thing in this house, and she won't even see anything. Ugh, Jesus. All I wanted to do was come home and relax and sleep. What in hell is Bokan thinking we're doing in the dining room? This kid is so lazy. Bokan! I have been yelling your name for about 10 minutes now. Can't you hear? Are you deaf? Mama, I, I am so glad you're back. Why is your underwear in the dining room, Bokan? Because? You haven't even done any dishes since I left. Where is your father, by the way? He... he went to the tavern. Bokan, are you okay? Are you crazy? No. So, you are telling me that my husband, Ranku, went to the tavern? Yes. Don't you... don't you trust me, Mom? I know my husband wouldn't go to the tavern. He never... he... He hates that place very much, and for God's sakes, he is not feeling well. 
Why is my family falling apart every time I leave? Oh, please get me some water. Here you go, Mom. Mama, I want to tell you something. Not now, Bokan. I am just so... But, Mama, it's important. Can't it wait? Of course. Please do some dishes before you do think of doing anything that makes you happy. You are 12 years old. You are not a child no more. <laughs> Hey, Balsaranku, we are so happy to have you here. You bring so much joy to everybody. I am. I am the leader, and I say we are the leaders, and tomorrow we shall conquer the world. Or the world will come to conquer us. Who knows? <laughs> Did I tell you that I was a poet at one point in my life? No, sir. But I can tell by what you said that you are a really smart individual. But, sir, you look so skinny. Tell us, have you been le eating lately? Yes, Ronku. Hit the nail on the head, mister. Is everything okay with Masoko? I mean, your wife? Is she treating you okay? What? Gentlemen, I am not sick. I'm just enjoying life like there is no tomorrow. <laughs> I love my daughter so much you don't know. And I wish and hope that she loves me too. Of course your daughter Bo Kong will never <laughs> abandon you because you're a drunkard. <laughs> you are right. I have a smart daughter, and she is the best thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Life is so funny, right? <laughs> but Mr. Ronku, you should go and visit Nagaka Mogali. You don't look too good to me. <laughs> I'll be fine. I just have some family matter. You know how women are. <laughs> they have too much to say. You get me, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again. Woman, woman, woman. I wish they could all just ship them off to Jupiter and leave men on this planet. <laughs> you are so hilarious. We can't live without women. Who said? I said so. I think the beer that stops you thinks straight. No, it's not. It is. Listen here. Without women... We wouldn't even be here on this table fighting about this. Nine months in man, woman's womb. Revise your history class. You are such a liar. Not even history. Biology. Women should be treated with respect. <laughs> I said it. What are you going to say now, huh? Gentlemen. Gentlemen, settle down. Ronku, what is the matter? Oh my gosh, somebody help. I'm fine. Somebody call the ambulance. What is going on with me? It's so hot. Call my wife and my daughter. Bokong, my beautiful daughter, Bokong. <laughs> How I love the summer breeze. It's just so nice. <laughs> oh, Matisse, you can say that again. I think you know that when I come to visit you, Matoko, it's because of your delicious tea. <laughs> Matoko, what is going on with Mr. Ranku? As a friend, I just had to ask. To tell you the truth, Matini, I have no idea. He has been very sick lately. After I came back from the teacher's conference, things just got bad. I have also been having tremendous headaches. Men, you know how miserable and annoying they can be. You can say that again. Oh, how I wish I had my Ranku back. He has changed. Excuse me. Hello? Hello. Hel hello, um, 
Matoko speaking. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I, I just want to let you know that your husband is at Matiko's hospital. What? Yes, and he needs you. What happened to my husband? Tell me! I, I don't have much time now, but he needs you now. Uh, what, what happened? Hello? Hello? What's wrong? Bokan, come here, please. Mama, what's going on? Your father's in the hospital. Put on your shoes. Let's go. Uh, okay. What happened? They didn't say anything. What can I do to help? I just lost the doors for us. Jesus, Bokan, let's go. Oh, God, what happened to my husband? Excuse me, nurse. Do you know where my husband, Mr. Rauku's ward, is? There you are, Matoko. Where is he? Sit down, Matoko. I am really so... Yes, Mr. Rauku is dead. No. No! Nurse! Mom, Mom, please don't die. Please don't die. Who is going to be with me? I need you, Mother, please! Can I have one? <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> I will never leave you, Bokan. I'll never, ever leave you. What is done is done. I can now weep like a willow. We are all shocked, Mr. Ranku. May his soul rest in peace. So gone. My girl, let's go and say our last words to your father. We can also come if you don't mind. Thank you, gentlemen. But I'd rather go with my daughter. Thank you for everything. Come, Bokan. You no longer have a father, but I am your mother, and father, and I will never leave you, okay? Okay. What have we done to the gods? Why is everyone dying? Are we that evil? My eyes can't believe what I just witnessed. Yes. Even the good men are taken by this disease. Mr. Ranku, a well-respected man. What kind of disease is this? <laughs> You just heard Shh, Don't Tell Anyone, written and directed by Matiba Hopa, featuring Jesse Mazzola as Hanku, Matiba Hopa as the traditional healer Mogali, Tori Dramondi as Bokong, Ariana Samorian as Matoko, Abby Jones as Matimi, and Sam Wagner and Josh Fredette as the men in the tavern and later at the hospital. Thank you for tuning in to WNEC 91.7 FM and New England College Radio via WNECFM.org.
Our last play features everyone in the class, plus members of the New England College community. It is the grand finale and fills the WNEC-FM studio with a dozen people. Listen for the voices of New England College President Michelle Perkins, Vice President of Academic Affairs Mark Watman, Director of Admissions Yasin El Sadi, and WNEC's very own Dr. Frog. Combining two comic book heroes who would never meet in reality, here is Spider-Man Teams Up with Batman, written by Jesse Mazzola and directed by Joshua Fredette. spider on a high school science field trip, teenage orphan Peter Parker was given extraordinary spider-like powers. Peter now spends his time as a college student at NYU while fighting crime as Amazing Spider-Man and taking care of his recently widowed Aunt May. Tonight, Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man, will experience one of his most memorable encounters yet. Oh, Peter, you are such a good nephew. I appreciate you taking care of me while juggling college work. I'm so proud of you. I'm sure your Uncle Ben is watching over us and is very proud of you, too. Thanks, Aunt May. I feel so humble to hear you say that. I'm sure Uncle Ben is with us in spirit. You have gifts, Peter. Use them for good. I was proud of you as a kid, and I am still proud of you now. You're like a son to me. I love you. Well, Peter, oh, I'm getting sleepy. I'll let you go finish your homework. Good night, dear. I love you. Love you too, Aunt May. Good night. Well, my homework isn't due for another week, so for now I'll just turn on the TV and relax for a bit. Let's see what's on. Breaking news tonight's top story, Spider-Man Spider Archivillian villain Venom broke into Midtown Science Expo in Queens, New York, with no hostages and police, police are unsure of what he's after. I gotta find out what Venom wants, but not as Peter Parker, as Spider-Man. What is that? Venom, turn that time machine off! I'll take that as a no. If you want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. No! Am I? Oh, man, I shouldn't have charged at Venom when he was in front of that machine's portal. Help! Somebody help me! I'm being mugged! Well, not on my watch. S stop! Somebody help me! I'm being mugged! Just give me your purse, lady. And I won't hurt you. Wow! You want a purse that bad? <laughs> Those are for girls. <laughs> Well, he's out cold. Wow, thank you so much. Who are you? I'm your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Nice to hear someone say thank you for a change. Anytime. So do I get to see the face of the guy who saved me? Or is, it gon or is he gonna keep the mask on and be mysterious about it, like Batman? Batman? Who's Batman? He's the Dark Knight, the guardian of Gotham City. Gotham City! Now I know where I am. Maybe Batman can help me. What else do you know about Batman? He's our hero who wears a mask that resembles a, bu 
a bat and has a cape with body armor. I've only heard about his appearance, although I hear that he's really scary in person. Most people run away from him, even most criminals. The spider sense is going off. Look out behind you! Wow, who is that guy? Oh, hey, let me take a guess. <laughs> Who are you? I'm Spider-Man. I'm guessing you're the Batman? How do you know my name? Lucky guess. Um, can you help me? I'm lost. Oh, um, I accidentally got snagged into a time machine or something uh, and somehow wound up here. What year is it? 2017. This is weird. Maybe it wasn't a time machine. That's the same year that I was living in Queens, New York. I'm in a different city, yet the time zone is the same? Well, maybe the machine beamed me into a different city that's in a different part of the world. Batman, can you show me a map of where I am? Yes, I can. The nearest map is at the terminal in downtown Gotham. Let's go. Here's the terminal. Hmm, strange. I don't recognize this city or this map at all. Batman, I know this is a silly question, but have you ever heard of New York City? Never heard of it. What? Seriously? Wait a minute, you're messing with me, right? Nope. So what planet am I on then? Earth. Wait, this doesn't add up. You mean to tell me I'm on planet Earth, but there's no New York on this planet? Unless I'm in a different universe. So I'm in a different universe that's similar in time as the universe that I'm from. Only difference, as far as I know, so I've never heard of Gotham City on planet Earth, or America, is the names of locations. In case you were wondering, this city is in America. <laughs> oh, this just keeps getting more interesting. Do you know of any kind of machine in Gotham that could beam me back to my universe? How and where are we going to find a machine in Gotham City that's the same as the one you're talking about? Breaking news, we have just received word on the Joker. A couple of weeks ago, the Joker escaped Akam Asalam. Now he's believed to be after the Gotham City Science Expo. We will keep you updated. Maybe that's where the machine is. Batman, if you help me find the Gotham City Science Expo, I'll help you catch the Joker. Look, kid, I've put him behind bars before, and I'll do it again. I don't need your help. You asked me to help you get back home. That was the deal, right? Fair enough. Let's go find this place. This is it. Okay, so what's the game plan? You go in first and take out all of the henchmen. Leave the Joker to me. What the? Hey, don't worry. I just called in to take the night shift. So I'm punching in, then you punch out. If you're still confused, here, allow me to explain. Down goes the henchman. Surprise there's only one so far. Why is my spider sense going off? Wait, who's this guy? It's the circus clown. Give it up, Joker. <laughs> who's this clown? Look who's talking, Bozo, with the creepy smile. Shouldn't you be at some kid's birthday party making a balloon animal? How'd you find me here? Actually, I found you from one of my friends. One of them who just so happens to be right behind you. Uh, how did you escape Arkham? What? The daycare center surrounded by a bunch of fat mall cops? <laughs> you make it sound like that was an actual achievement, as opposed to what I have planned for you. What could you possibly want with the time machine? You fool! It's not a time machine. It's a multiverse travel machine. I know the name needs work, but that's what it is. It allows the traveler to go to a different universe. Then what's your plan this time? Mom always told me, what you don't know won't hurt you. <laughs> hey, Joker, why don't you pick a fight with someone who's not at the mercy of your taser gun? Don't be too sure of yourself, whoever you are. The name's Spider-Man. Now let go of Batman. 
No, you don't understand. Your friend, the Batman, locked me up in this dreadful place called Arkham Asylum. It's literally like hell on earth. You can't possibly imagine the pain and suffering I went through in my life and what I went through living in that scum hole. All because of Batman. So you can only imagine why I'm about to do something so horrible to Batman. After I escaped, I found a hideout along with all the little things I needed, including a TV. I saw a news report on the multiverse travel machine and how it was the gateway to hell itself. Then I thought, what a great idea. Lure Batman into the location of the device, then tase him in order to weaken him. And finally, throw him into the portal to hell! <laughs> yeah, sounds very logical. Now, how do you plan on doing that with me here? Oh, don't worry. I always have a backup. Just ask the Batman. Go on, tell Spider-Man. It's... You're out. I didn't say Simon Says. <laughs> Boys, take care of Spider-Man. Now what? All right, men. Aim. Fire! <laughs> I'm out. He's too fast. What do we do now? Wait for the boss's orders. Ah, too fast for you. <laughs> well, Joker, I bet that didn't go as planned. Now, Batman and I are literally going to wipe that stupid smile off your face and take out every single one of your thugs. And it looks like while you weren't looking, Batman is already one step behind you. Literally. Wait, what? Where is he? He's gone. <laughs> the joke's on you. He's right next to me. I know he can be very sneaky. Now, Batman, if you don't mind, I really want to go home ASAP. So let's take out these scrubs. Sounds like a plan to me. Let's do it. Hey, Joker. Simon says, answer the following question. Ever dance with the devil in the- I don't dance! Of course you don't dance. Because you have a glass jaw. Ha ha ha! I get it. Cause dance is a slang for, for fight. But as you said, he can't dance cause he has a glass jaw. Someone who can't take a punch. Since when did Batman develop a clever sense of humor? Oh, maybe it's because you've been hanging around with me for too long. Maybe. Thank you for everything. Now go home and keep fighting for good. With great power comes great... Great what? I forget the rest. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about. But hey, we make a good team. However, I see the multiverse whatever it's called machine over there. But thanks for your help, and take care. Godspeed. Peter Benjamin Parker, we are so proud of you. Your uncle and I always believed that you were put on this earth for a reason. So go out there, do good things, and show the world who you are. Pete, you know how much your aunt and I love you. You're our hero. We remember how much you loved heroes when you were growing up. The great thing about heroes is they use their powers for good. That's why I always tell you, Pete, with great power comes great responsibility. Wait! Batman! I figured out what you were trying to tell me. With great power comes great responsibility!
That was Spider-Man Teams Up with Batman, written by Jesse Mazzola and directed by Joshua Fredette, featuring Jesse Mazzola as Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man, and special guest Mark Watman as a Batman and a henchman, Yazin al Sadi as the Joker, President Michelle Perkins as Aunt May, Phil Reeder as Uncle Ben, and Dr. Frog, the announcer. Additional voices were by Matiba Khopa as the newswoman and a henchman, Sam Wagner as the mugger and a henchman, and Tori Jamondi as the mugger victim in debt to Spider-Man. You've been listening to the live radio performance of the Intro to Audio Theater Production Course's semester-long project, where each student wrote an original play specifically for the audio format, then directed, acted, and performed live sound effects. Sound effects artists include Matiba, Ariana, Jesse, Josh, Tori, and Abby. Mixer operators were Sam Wagner, Josh Fredette, Abby Jones, Matiba Kolpa, Ariana Samorian, and Jesse Mazzola. Recorded sound effects were triggered by Janine Marr. Music included selections by Oceana, DeFroys, Stefanik, Perny and Collar, The Black Veil Brides, ART, and Jaluka. Special guest performers included New England College President Michelle Perkins, Vice President of Academic Affairs Mark Watman, Director of Admissions Yazin El Sadi, 1973 graduate Phil Reeder, also known as Dr. Frog, this live performance of Under the Bed, Hampton Beach, I See No Palpatino, Love Race, Mana, Shh, Don't Tell Anyone, and Spider-Man Teams Up with Batman is copyrighted 2013, all rights reserved, and was produced by Janine Marr with special thanks to WNEC-FM for broadcasting the show on 91.7 FM and over the internet via WNECFM.org. If you would like information on how you can participate in a live radio theater production, email wnecfm at nec.edu. This is WNECFM, Henniker. Shorts, Wayne. It doesn't ruin your vision like a TV show. All Watch together you. now, sing along with Unback Whale. <laughs> Practice yoga on the ground or get up and walk around. You can do it when you're listening to the radio. Or WNEC FM in Henniker, New Hampshire.